Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn, 24 hours away from Dalton Smith's return in Sheffield. It's been quite some story, quite some run with Dalton, but big things on the horizon for him from tomorrow. Yeah, I love it when it gets gets serious, you know, and it's it's been serious before, but not really at this level. Of course not, you know, it's a, it's a big step up. We've seen Jose Zapeda in action many times before. He's a world-class fighter. Punch is very, very hard, very dangerous. We've seen a lot of these England-Mexico clashes, you know, uh, really um, not go the way we planned. Um, and it's a big step up. Like, like I said, it's that armbands off moment that happens across the levels. I mean, even for Campbell Hatton tomorrow night, same thing, really, where you just go, right, it's time, mate. Let's see it. And this is obviously at a level above that, but that's an exciting moment for a fighter that you've represented. I was speaking to Matty Hatton earlier. He was talking about Campbell's progression at 14 and 0 in his career, getting that first title under his belt, it could be a case of shackles off now and we start to see him in these competitive and in these big fights. Yeah, and you know what, like, he's definitely behind in terms of where I would expect one of our normal prospects to be. And the reason he's behind is because he didn't really have any amateur experience and that sometimes his performances haven't been good enough. Sometimes they've been good and you think, right, we're on a roll now. And then just you just think he needs a little bit more time. At 14 and 0, if you're not ready to win the central area title, you may never be ready. So there's a huge amount of pressure on Campbell Hatton. I actually think he's going to come through this in, with flying colours. But fair play, doing it against the champion in his backyard with loads of support, be a really good fight. Um, you talked yesterday about Boxer and Adam Azim and that fight not happening you've had some sort of correspondence from them that uh, that won't happen can you just clarify sort of what you've just, heard just a text from i think ben shalom to frank smith to say that they won't be doing that fight next um but they haven't officially pulled out so i, I guess i expected them to pull out before this fight but i guess part of them is thinking if dawn smith was to get beat we might take the fight which you know but then it becomes a little bit embarrassing i think they've got a show next week if dawn smith looks good and wins you guys are going to be saying, are you fighting Dalton Smith? And you have to, you, know, you really have to think about your fighter at this point, you know, because your job is to come out here and speak on your fighter's behalf. And Adam Azim would fight Dalton Smith, but he's basically going to be told that he's not good enough or he's not ready right now to fight him. And that's difficult from a confidence perspective. But you also get a load of stick off fans. So you need to come out and say, right, we've spoken to the training team. Adam Azim wants this fight. We feel he's not on Dalton Smith's level at the moment. We think he's going to be there, but we're not going. But then it's difficult when you've been talking about fighting Keyshawn Davis, fighting all these people. So, look, we understand the hype game, but it's just a bit embarrassing. But listen, if Dalton doesn't win on Saturday, maybe they fight him. But hopefully he comes through, looks good, and you know they'll they'll definitely swerve that one for now. And sticking with Boxer, I know their deal with Sky Sports is up towards the end of this year. Do you expect that to be renewed? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Sky will, want, will stay in boxing. You know, obviously recent events and, you know, I think their lack of major pay-per-views. Uh, and it's a difficult market. Like, you have to spend the money and maybe their appetite isn't there anymore. Um, so I don't know. You know, I hope so because they've been incredible for boxing. I mean, you know, when we left, they were the premium outlet. You know, they were flying. Boxing was extremely profitable for them. And obviously since, it's been a bit of a disaster. But, you know, they're a tremendous platform and I think it's important that boxing stays on Sky. They announced yesterday Lawrence Coley making this return at bridge away against Rosansky. That's um, one of the reasons they might not stay in boxing. <laughs> Opportunity for him. Are you surprised sort of it's got to bridge away rather than step uh, up to no, heavyweight? I think he definitely needs to step up, you know. Um, he kind of gives you the opportunity to say, I'm a two-weight world champion you know, whilst crossing your fingers behind your back kind of thing. Um, he's got to do it in Poland. I guess that's quite exciting. And Rosanski is very limited. Um, but I feel, I feel very sorry for Lawrence. You know, I think that he was in such a great position and, you know, we cared about him. Anthony Joshua, 258, cared about him. But sometimes you just listen to the wrong people who don't really care about you, but you get convinced to do something and it's been a disaster. But hopefully he can get back on the horse and, you know, he can win. And I'd like to see him move up to heavyweight at some point. You know, I think that that's probably where he'll end up being. We didn't get the chance to speak about Ryan Garcia yesterday. We know what's going on with him. We've seen what's going on. Do you think before the fight against Devin Haney, he needs to be assessed by a 
medical professional? Is there well, anything there when, that needs when, to happen? When you said we know what's going on, no. yeah, we, we have seen, yeah, and, and it is, the behaviour is concerning. You know, he's definitely not behaving in the same way as he normally does, which automatically is a concern for the people around him. But he does have very knowledgeable people around him and people who you would hope and expect to act in his best interests. Derek James, for example. I don't think Derek James, I mean, certainly he wouldn't want to be involved with going into a fight with Devin Haney unless his fight was 100% physically and mentally. Oscar De La Hoya, who's got a huge experience in championship fights. Bernard Hopkins, obviously his family. So you've got to pre presume that in training, things are going all right. Because if they weren't, and he was behaving like that, you just, you, I mean, there's no way. But also, boxing is a, sometimes a bit of a business where people try and keep people in a fight. Do you know what I mean? I just hope that's not what they're trying to do. Because if he pulls out with a week to go, or two weeks to go, it's really not fair on Devin Haney, you know, who's had to just stay professional and be ready. But it is four weeks away, the fight. And the closer it gets, probably the more chance it has of happening. So maybe, I mean, you know, Oscar said he's just trolling. I'm, I don't believe that. But maybe inside the room, things aren't as bad as they appear on social media. Do you think generally there should be more testing, probably not the right word, around mental health in boxing, especially in the lead uh, up to I fights? I think really it's, it's more the responsibility of the team because you, if, if you, I've had two fighters who I feel like have been in a similar position to Ryan Garcia in terms of what I've, the, sim, the symptoms and the signs. And I can't judge on Ryan Garcia because I've not spoken to him, I don't know him, but just little signs of behaviour you know, um, and I, I think they don't, but, you know, I'm sorry if they do mind me saying, but it's been well spoken about. One was Ammo Williams and one was Scott Fitzgerald, you know, and thankfully both are okay now and particularly Ammo Williams came through incredibly on the other side and showed incredible strength and had good people around him to help him. But it's just the behaviour just started to change a little bit and that's when the people around you should be spotting that and they're the ones that can get you help very rarely are you going to go and get help yourself until it's too late so um sometimes you try and scott was a great example of so many people trying but we couldn't save him in that situation unfortunately and he had to combust to a point where his whole world had really you know, just exploded. Whereas Ammo, thankfully, we got him into a position and Pete people and Pete Berg and people like that got him into a position where he got that help and he turned it around quicker and before it was too late. Do you know what I mean? So the whole keeping people in a fight is not, a, that happens a lot in boxing, that there'll be many occasions when someone's not mentally ready to fight, but the team will make sure they get him into the fight because he needs the money and they need the money and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, more help in general, I think, mentally for, for people in all society, not just in sport and not just in boxing, but hopefully people around athletes and boxers will act in the right way to get help if they spot these changes. We spoke yesterday about Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois, mm -hmm. Philip Hergovic being mentioned and sort of rumoured to be underway negotiations there. If Hergovic has taken off the table, what are the sort of plans for Anthony Joshua? Um, I mean, we'll see what happens with Fury Usyk, but the plan is really to become world champion. If we can do that straight off the bat in the undisputed fight, fantastic. If not, we'll fight for the IBF title. You know, whether that's Hergovic, uh, which it would be at the moment, whether in time it's someone else, but we're not really looking at anyone else specifically, I think, other than the Fury Usyk winner mm -hmm. and Hergovic. So... AJ's keen to fight, you know, even he's been on already asking when am I next fighting and he's had four fights in 11 months so my advice is to, to stay ready as he always does and then see what happens on May the 18th. AJ said five to seven fights left in his career. Mm. What about yourself? Uh, well, well, not me. fights, no. but <laughs> no. No. Look, you've, yeah, you've been I in the business a long it. time. When AJ yeah. hang... Everything changes fight by fight. You know, if you might have asked me after Usyk, two, I might have said three to five. 
now I'm saying five to seven, like him. And that's three, four fights after the Usyk fight. Do you know what I mean? So you just have to evaluate this from what you see in the gym, from what you see in the ring, from what you hear from the mouth, from what you think you see in the heart. Do you know what I mean? But like right now, he's hungrier than he's ever been. He's better than he's ever been. He's mentally in a better place than I think he's been for years and may ever have been. So at that point, like it's miles away at the moment, but you have a bad night and you get stopped and then you come back and you get stopped again. It could be two fights. That's the beauty of the heavyweight division. But right now, AJ's in a brilliant place and, and we're all looking forward to the future. The final one from me, you've been involved in this sport a long time and you've had a lot of fighters during that time, hundreds of fighters. Do you still have that sort of burning desire? Is there any thoughts of retirement or anything like that in your head? And, and what would that look like for you? You're trying to write me off already. I'm only 44. <laughs> um, I don't want to be... I, I actually had a conversation with Frank Warren about it in Saudi Arabia. And I said to him, how much longer are you going to do this? Like, he's getting on, like my dad. You know, sometimes you look at these guys. My dad's 76. I think Frank Warren's 73. And, you know, you can tell they're getting old, with all due respect, physically. Mm. You know, they're both fit guys, but, you know, all of a sudden, the backs and, you know, and it's like travelling around on a plane, week in, week out, having arguments with people. I saw my dad happier than ever when he left boxing. All right. Might not have had the buzz and the excitement, but the, the problems went away. And he dealt with a lot nicer people in a nicer environment. But I'm sure he missed the big night. So the answer to mine is the same as Anthony Joshua. Looking into the heart and the soul and saying, how much do you want to do it anymore? You know, thankfully, uh, got a great business, got enough money. But I love the nights. Like tomorrow night, I cannot wait, honestly, to sit there for those five fights on TV. Even Nico Levias against Murga. I can't wait. Because I'm going to go into that Murga's changing room, wish him all the best. I'm going to see a young kid going, if I just win tonight, I just can go on and maybe I can fight for the British title and I can do this. And, you know, then I'm going to watch Campbell Hatton go out with his dad screaming and shouting, like sweating, hoping that his son can win the same title that he won 25 years ago in this kid's backyard, right? Then I'm going to watch Terry Harper and Sandy Ryan, two great ambassadors for boxing in a complete 50-50 fight. And then I'm going to watch Dalton Smith, who we signed from his debut, in a fight where he could get knocked out, right? And it could... So I just... There's nothing like it, but it's unbelievably taxing, right, as a job. And it's now, I don't know, nearly half three, and I've been standing here for two hours talking to you lot. I've still got four left. And, you know, but we love it. And we, I love talking about boxing. I think you'll see me do a lot more within the community. I would love to be the person that got the government to invest in boxing at grassroots level because that's a real legacy, you know. Darts. Yeah. And then I'll probably, yeah, darts is, I mean, huge. And then I'll probably be a film star, might do my own music tour or something like that. And we'll see how it goes. Lovely. Cheers for your time, Eddie.